I picked up a uh, AC DC current meter. Uh, it, the neat feature is that it's actually able to go down to DC. <clears throat> and um, so I just got it from Amazon. Pretty neat. Except for one problem. What is that? Is that a loose screw? I, I don't know. So in this video I'm going to uh, attempt to take this apart carefully and identify the problem. And uh, we'll see what I find out. Just as a, a little bit of a side info. These are actually pretty neat. I've used one at work. Um, the uh, company that makes them is actually a French company whose name is uh, I don't really know how to pronounce that. I'm going to guess it's uh, Chauvin Arnaud. I, I, I'm probably butchering that. Anyway, um, they sell this instrument under um, several brands. They have, I guess, their own AEMC brand. Um, <clears throat> but this exact same probe is available through um, countless others. Uh, Tektronix carries it. Uh, Fluke carries it. Uh, HP, which then became Agilent, which is now Keysight, carries it as well. And if you look at the specs and the photos, they're all identical. Uh, I have a Tektronix one at work, and it's the exact same, same molding, everything. All they changed is uh, the, the two stickers. But um, <clears throat> the one branded under AEMC is about $450. It goes from DC to 100 kilohertz, and that would be with a, a 3 dB drop up to 100 kilohertz. Um, it's rated for up to 70 amps RMS, or 100 amps peak. And if you haven't used these, the neat thing again is it'll go down to DC. Most clamp meters will not, they're AC only. So that's kind of the neat feature of these. Um, Anyway, let's get to the um, the teardown. There's a little flathead here, and that covers the uh, battery compartment. Let's uh, take a look in there. So the battery door comes off, we have a 9-volt connector. There does not appear to be any exposed uh, screws in here, so there's uh, not much to see there. There's a couple caps on either side of the um, hinge. And uh, I'm going to try to pop these off carefully. Well, I didn't cause any damage, but I did it the hard way. Um, <clears throat> if you look carefully, um, hopefully you can see in, in the video that there are um, some kind of uh, brackets on there, a couple of them. And then corresponding keyways on here. Um, so it looks like you would just have to uh, twist it, and that would... Uh, free it much more easily without risk of damage. Oh, there you go. Now you can see the uh, keyways right there. Much better. <clears throat> there appears to be a uh, trim pot or trim cap or um, adjustable inductor on uh, this side there's a little little flathead screw right there I'm not going to adjust that because I don't have a way to calibrate this um, nearly as well as the factory would so 
Um, <clears throat> I was hoping there would be a uh, a bolt that would I could take off, but I guess that isn't what I'm looking for. Well, there's no screws hidden under that one. Well, no screws hidden under that one. Rather surprised. Well, how do we get in this? Um, <clears throat> Nothing hidden under there. So there's a um, coarse thread screw, uh, maybe a wood screw or a self-tapping screw. Uh, and it looks like it has a bit of uh, silicone in place. <clears throat> well, the problem isn't there, but let's take a closer look. So that was obviously the trick. You have to uh, drift out the, the pin. Well, doesn't that suck? You get it open and now it doesn't make noise. Okay, um, well, there's not a whole lot to see and I'm not going to do a uh, kind of destructive teardown because this is a brand new item. Uh, but as we can see, there's obviously that one, um, looks like a trim pot. There's a circuit board hidden in there. And then the, uh, I believe that's a transformer. To be honest, I'm really not familiar with how these work uh, in detail. So uh, I can't really offer a whole lot of insight there. There's a Phillips screw right here. I'm going to take that off and let's see what's under here. All right, uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, take this part off it's soldered on and I really don't want to risk causing any damage it looks to be <clears throat> a uh, just a ground plane to reduce noise looks like that wire got pinched pretty bad but uh, not to the actual I mean just the insulation not to the actual wire um, Yeah, nothing looks uh, loose or damaged. Really wish I could figure out what that rattling sound was. Uh, I'm gonna try putting it back together.
So the hard part is uh, you need to get that trim pot aligned with the dial right here and then that switch with the, uh, the slide switch. Oh man, all that work for oh, these parts in here. Jeez, that's just infuriating. And it looks like it's actually, these uh, two halves are glued together. I'm not sure if that's really clear on camera, but there's uh, some glue that oozed out there. So I will not be taking that apart. So that was a real pain. Um, but anyway, if you ever have to do this, if you ever have to do this yourself, the main thing is um, try to make sure you get the slide switch in the right way, so the arrow is pointing to the text. There's also a uh, spring on the uh, that goes in this plastic piece that keeps it tension or uh, pressure between it and the uh, electronic switch. And then um, you need to keep. Uh, the little uh, tab on the inside of this lined up with the trim pot that's on the circuit board. And doing all that can be uh, rather tedious. Once you get this uh, top plastic piece back in, it will um, kind of sit in place under its own friction. And you can see that the uh, trim pot... Uh, you can see how the trim pot is uh, properly aligned in there. Just like it was earlier. When we have the screws in, it'll be uh, pretty much spot on. All right, so that went together pretty well. The uh, trim pod is nicely aligned in there, and there wasn't any uh, like flexing or bending. Obviously, if you have that kind of a feeling, you probably have something pinched or uh, not aligned properly. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I uh, really bummed out that the uh, culprit is in there. Uh, yeah, and it looks like it's glued together. It's, um, or uh, like Sonic welded maybe. But the two plastic halves appear to be permanently attached. So that's uh, a real bummer. Well, I'll put it back together. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. I imagine it'll probably work. Uh, it sounds like just a loose screw. Anyway, uh, we'll find out, and I'm going to go ahead and return it anyway because I, I don't want something like that.
There we go. So that was a, a bit annoying because there's no um, there's no lip on one side to keep it from pushing too far. So uh, an easy way is to use a flat piece so you can't go too far. Should have thought of that earlier. Anyway, um, yeah, unfortunately this wasn't that great of a teardown video. I um, was kind of reluctant to go too far because I'm going to go, go ahead and return this. I don't want to uh, have any problems. Luckily, I got it through Amazon, and they're uh, pretty uh, reasonable. It was uh, sold by Amazon, not one of their uh, marketplace retailers, but actually from from Amazon. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, there was little silicone, uh, I'm guessing like tamper markers on that screw. And then there were two little uh, silicone bits to indicate right there too. Or, yeah, right there. But I don't think Amazon's really gonna care. So we'll find out. Unbelievable. I mean, how does that get through quality assurance? Why? Anyway. All right, let's uh, give it a shot. So it came with a uh, nine volt battery. Might as well use that one. Good, so it doesn't appear to be broken yet. That's good. Let's see how it per, uh, performs. <clears throat> All right, so I have a um, lab power supply here. I've got it set to five volts and a limit of three amps. And, uh, have it kind of broken out to some really thin wire. I'm going to go ahead and uh, loop this through. Anyway, so uh, it may not be ter terribly obvious, but we have uh, a little over three amps here. There we go, three amps. And um, yeah, that's fine. We have uh, about looks like 300 millivolts, which is good. Yeah, a little more. If I turn off the power supply, yeah, that's actually pretty much spot on. Uh, I forgot to adjust the zero. Let's uh, trim that out. All right, so we can now see that we're on the um, 100 millivolt per division scale. I have it trimmed at zero. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my power turn my power supply back on. And spot on, we have uh, 300 millivolts, and uh, power supply is showing three amps. So with the um, 100 millivolt per amp scale, that's uh, spot on. And if I adjust my power supply down, it reacts uh, the way it should. So at one amp, we're down to 100 millivolts, two amps, 200 millivolts, three amps, 300. All right. Anyway, so at least I didn't break it. <laughs> uh, but I am, actually, let me see if, uh, if that has any effect. Doesn't seem to have any um, effect on the measurements, at least not at uh, low frequencies. Oh, I just uh, shook my cable free. But yeah, it doesn't appear to have any uh, adverse effect, but I'm still rather uh, reluctant to keep it. It's a $450 tool that has a loose screw or something in an area that I can't get to. 
rather depressing. Anyway, so there's a uh, brief video tear down. Um, yeah, sorry I didn't get any uh, better photos of the uh, circuit boards, but I really didn't want to risk uh, causing any damage since I will be returning it. So, there you have it. Um, the model number is SL261. And again, it's uh, rated for 70 amps RMS, 100 amps peak. Um, the Tektronix version that I use at work, which is uh, identical, literally the only thing they changed was the, uh, the two stickers. Uh, it works beautifully, and it does not have the uh, annoying wobble. So this will go back to Amazon. Um, it's a shame. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was um, at least a little bit entertaining. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below.